My very first day in Chestertown was, uh, I came here with my mother, actually, to the Chestertown Tea Party Festival in May of 1992. And while I was walking the streets, I sort of stumbled onto Echo Hill Outdoor School's booth and was amazed that you could kind of get paid to play outside with kids. I thought that was just a crazy concept and sort of talked myself into a job and uh, been living here ever since. So that's about 21 years now. The way that I got involved in the Planning Commission is kind of interesting. I live on East Campus Avenue, so my house is kind of sandwiched actually between Washington College's campus and the campus of the hospital. And there was a time about 10, 15 years ago when both of those institutions were buying and sort of warehousing residential properties in and around my neighborhood. And the neighbors kind of became alarmed at what was happening because nobody would talk to us from either one of those institutions. Uh, so we ended up creating a little neighborhood association and banding together. We called it Neighbors for Neighborhoods. We met regularly to discuss what was going on. We uh, got on the agenda at a couple town council meetings. We ended up uh, kind of forcing those institutions' hands to meet with us and talk to us, and I became one of the more outspoken members of the group. And I think that caught the eye, actually, of the members of the mayor and council at that time. And uh, so a planning commission uh, space opened up, and I was asked to, to join up. And I figured I should probably put my money where my mouth is. And if I'm going to be one of these outspoken people in the town, maybe I should actually get involved in a meaningful way. Uh, where I could make a difference. And so that's how I ended up on the Planning Commission. That was about six years ago. I think that the, the biggest um, benefit to being on the Planning Commission and then potentially stepping up into being the mayor is that as a Planning Commission member, you really do look comprehensively at the entire community. Literally in the comp plan, you go street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood, uh, commercial area by commercial area, and you become familiar with each part of our town's unique strengths. You become familiar with the challenges that each location presents. You become familiar with areas where a little bit of redevelopment would be a great thing. And you really become conversant with just about every single situation that could arise for the future. And you, you're kind of forced to look at it and lay out a plan or a vision for the future of those areas. And I think that's a pretty unique thing that most people in town don't do. Most people that I know in Chestertown just love being here and kind of enjoy the community and do what they do on their block and that's kind of as far as it goes and you know they don't take on a whole lot more in terms of envisioning the town or well, that's where my brain has been for the last six years and I think actually as mayor that would be an advantage for me. People, I don't know if people realize that planning commission is a volunteer job. You, you sign up for this for free. Uh, it's Without a doubt, the most thankless thing that I've ever done. It's probably one of the most difficult positions I've ever had. I've been the chairman of the commission for the last four years. But I would also say it's probably one of the most important jobs that I've ever done in any community that I've ever lived in because you're literally planning for the future of the town. And a lot of the really neat things that the council gets to implement, things like the rail trail, you know, things like little pocket parks, those are all things that the planning commission has laid out in the comprehensive plan. Um, and actually one of the kind of frustrating things about planning commission is you're recommending things and you never get to implement, uh, you know, you don't, you don't control the purse strings and you don't control uh, prioritizing. And so uh, that's one of the reasons I actually am interested in running for mayor is because you actually get to be on the other side and, and kind of implement some of the really neat projects that are spelled out in the comprehensive plan. Uh, I think for, for quality of life, I think we need to continue on the road that we're on with completing the rail trail, for example. Uh, we have a lot of uh, sidewalks that we envision for different neighborhoods where that were built back in the 70s, really with a much more suburban rather than an urban design. So continuing to push for more sustainable uh, growth with new projects, uh, really fighting for pedestrian amenities, Landscaping, to me, I've been amazed at the difference requiring developers to put in three-inch caliper trees makes five years out when that development matures a little bit. It looks so much nicer with landscaping. Um, some of our commercial areas, you know, there's an area, High Street Extended comes to mind, where, you know, we altered the zoning a little bit so that we encouraged any new development to bring the buildings closer to the curb and hide the parking a little bit more to the side or, or behind new structures so that again, creates a little more of an urban setting rather than a suburban setting where 
automobiles kind of dominate the aesthetics there. Again, I, I outlined what I think the potential is on the waterfront. That could really be transformative, I think, for downtown and for the experience that you get down there. And I also really would love the opportunity to try to work with the owners of Kent Plaza, for example, and to come up with some creative ways. If they can't fund it themselves, something needs to be done to give those commercial areas a facelift that's been overdue for a couple of decades. Um, and then finally, I think the town needs to uh, support and even promote some residential growth within town limits. Uh, Stepney Manor comes to mind as a really unique opportunity to have a natural extension of our downtown grid that would also support our commercial marketplace. Those people would legitimately be able to walk less than a block and shop downtown. And we need more bodies downtown on a year-round basis. A place like Twilly Lane, for example, where the old health food store used to be on Cannon Street, is another opportunity where we could have, again, some infill development that fits nicely with the fabric of the town and provides more people, more bodies downtown. Trouble. I don't know that we're in trouble. I, don't, I think the town isn't uh, where we need it to be right now. I would suggest that we're not immune to national trends. Uh, you know, we just came out of, and we're still coming out of, the worst recession that I've certainly seen in my lifetime. And for us to think that we weren't going to have any adverse effects from that, I think, is naive. Um, I think there's also some trends in, in retail in general, uh, trends towards people shopping more online that really affect things like banks or bookstores, for example. And we've lost two banks and we've lost two bookstores. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you can now go on Amazon and buy books and it really doesn't make a lot of sense to have a big bookstore uh, with hardcover books or banking. You don't need this palatial bank to sell your bank anymore when more than half your transactions are happening online. So. I, I'm a glass half full kind of guy and that's one view that I would take but at the same time we need to admit and and look at how we could make this a more business friendly uh, community there's definitely a perception out there that Chestertown is not business friendly and in, in a town of this size perception is reality you know one of the first things that I would like to do if my campaign is successful was simply be to have business forums with the leaders of our three commercial areas uh, and for those of you that haven't been poring over uh, zoning maps for the last six years, we have a C1 general commercial area, which is basically from Kent Plaza to Washington Square. Uh, we have a C2 commercial area, which is our downtown marketplace, uh, where I'm sitting right now. And then we have our C3 commercial areas, which are you know Washington Avenue and High Street Extended. Each one of those commercial areas is very unique. And uh, I would simply invite those business owners to meet with our town leaders and ask them, what's working well for you? When are you profitable? What are some of the unique challenges of your marketplace? And what, if anything, can town leaders be doing uh, to make your business as profitable as it can be while still uh, you know, preserving the charm and the character of the community that we enjoy right now? So that's step one. And I think there's other little things we could do. I think meeting with... Uh, business leaders from other communities that are similar to us with similar size and characteristics. A place like Berlin, Maryland comes to mind. Uh, they have a wonderful little historic district surrounded by really nice residential, a lot like Chestertown. I led a kayaking trip there uh, last fall for a week and the place was hopping through the whole week. They didn't have an empty storefront in the whole town. What are they doing that we could be doing? And a lot of times there's subtle things that aren't budget busters, but we need to be seeking out advice from other communities like us that are doing well. I am somewhat risk averse actually, uh, although I'm registered as a Democrat, I, I like to have a balanced budget and I don't like having a, a ton of debt. Um, I think the marina is kind of an interesting example where the town did go out and take a loan. Uh, I don't know the, the exact specifics of how the finances are working, but I know that we're paying off debt and that's kind of scary. And so. Uh, you know, anything that's done down there would need to be done with a very concrete vision and plan for funding apparatuses. How is this going to work financially? And I don't, I don't feel like the town should go out and take a lot of financial risks because our budget is so tight as it is. Um, I think the marina is a great example of where, you know, we assumed when the marina was purchased that it was going to be f restored mostly through grants. Many of those grant funds are somewhat low in revenue because a lot of the the ones that specifically funded restorations and marinas up and down the eastern shore were based on revenue generated by boat sales and during the recession they weren't selling a whole lot of boats so those funds are pretty low but at the same time 
Um, what have we done with the marina to go raise money? Do we have a plan? Do we have an, you know, a professionally drawn vision for what we want to do there? What is the price tag? How much money do we even need to raise? Those are questions that I would immediately want to address down there. Um, and those are the kinds of questions that I would want answered with any sort of waterfront plan that I would sign off on before we sign off. Well, in terms of LED signage on historic buildings, in our National Landmark Historic District, I have to say, I'm a bit of a purist. Uh, you know, one of the things that the council asked for was a, an opinion from the Maryland Historic Trust on what they thought of the Garfields, just on their sign proposal. And they were pretty specific and clear that they didn't think it was appropriate either. Um, and what I see that I think most people don't see as much as I do because of my job is our historic district, as it looks right now, is an economic engine. And I think I, I would make the case it's perhaps our biggest economic engine. That's what makes us a unique community aesthetically. That's what differentiates us from a place like Centerville or, you know, Elkton. People come here specifically to see the historic district and anything that's going to fundamentally or could at least potentially fundamentally alter those aesthetics, I think we need to look at very, very carefully. One of the unique, I think, you know, potential downsides to that sign technology is once you approve one of those signs, you lose all quality control from thereafter. And the look of that sign, I don't care what you put in a guidebook or a handbook, there is no review process for anything that goes up on that sign after it's installed. And I think the potential is there for us to have unintended consequences, especially downtown with that type of sign technology. What I bring to the table is a little bit of, of youth, although it's, it's relative. I do have a little bit of gray hair that's creeping in, but uh, a lot of new energy, uh, stick to -itiveness. I've sh I think my record shows, especially on the Planning Commission, also with Sultana, that I get things done. Uh, I'm really good at organizing things. Uh, I'm good at uh, assigning people tasks and making sure that they follow through with what they're supposed to do and that they do it in a manner that is, you know, top notch. Um, you know, I love the town. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we just need. I value what's special about the town. I know the town backwards and forwards, as I said. I think my planning experience background, again, gives me a little bit more of a universal view of the community than maybe some others. Uh, I'm not coming in here for a power grab. I'm just doing this for the good of the community. And uh, if elected, I would do everything in my power to work collaboratively with all interested parties, including any other candidates that ran. You know, I do have a full-time job. I am not going to be Margo Bailey, and I'm not going to be Elmer Horsey. You know, the salary of this is $5,000 a year. Um, so if we're ever going to have a younger mayor, people need to understand that that person will probably have a job. And that's a little bit of a double-edged sword, but it does mean that by necessity, I will need to involve all members of the community to get involved, to take on tasks, and help. Because there's no way that I can do this you know, as an individual. I just I don't have the time, and it's not the way that my administration would be set up.